Can we build these? Sm can we build a small high tunnel? Build a small high tunnel and put some tomatoes in it. I think that's a great idea, but we have a big my... pie tunnel to put tomatoes in. I want, I want to have my own high tunnel. Your own high tunnel. <gasps> Where'd I get this kid? You well, got it. we're not going to build another high tunnel here, but you asked when we're going to plant tomatoes, and we're going to start the seeds here in just a couple of weeks. Wait, can we go in there? Hey, Godies. Um, I'm going to come check on Anna first. I don't think she's having babies, but I need to make sure. Hey, Gabriel, what's up, man? Gabe, Gabe. Hey, Gabe, Gabe. Come on, Bear. No, don't bring Bear in Gabriel. Why? Because Gabriel doesn't like other dogs coming around as goats. Hey, girls. There's Anna. What's up? There's Anna. Let's see if we can get her to stand up. She's so swollen. Oh, my goodness. So, she's looking really wide, really swollen, but I can still feel ligaments. I'm just watching her really closely. So a lot of times what I do in situations like this when I'm watching a goat closely for signs of impending labor is I'll just take a picture of their backside. But there is like an unfortunate side effect of that, which is that now my phone, when it shares me like memories or like on this day or whatever, it's, it'll be like this really cute picture of one of my kids and it makes a slideshow, I like to watch it. And like, it'll be a cute picture of my kids and I'm like, oh, look how small they are. And then there's another one. There's me and Jeremiah years ago. And then there's a goat's backside. And it's just like the entire spring montages of all of my memories are full of pictures of goat's backsides. I could have never imagined before having a farm just how much time I would spend observing the backsides of animals. Hey bear. You wanna go check out the babies? Oh, they're enjoying that sunlight. Baby goats, when they're like happy, they just look so dead. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times I've come up to check on baby goats and they're all sprawled out and I'm like, oh, now I'm finally at ease with it. These goats are fine. Look how sweet that baby is, Ben. Oh, guys. Maggie's udder is definitely more full and swollen today than it was even this morning. It's more swollen right now. We're getting close with her. Listen, I'm gonna open this and we're gonna go in here. But listen, I think Maggie may be in early labor. So look at my face right now. I need you to look at me. Okay, we can come in and gently touch these babies. Is that your listening face? Okay, and we're, we're gonna go in here, but when you're around a mommy who's trying to give birth, it's extremely important that they feel safe. So what can you do to make Maggie feel safe while you're going in her, her safe space? stay calm that's a great one what else what does that mean maybe like not talking loudly and not moving real fast okay that sounds perfect that sounds like you got a great grasp on how to make her feel safe so let's come in here now like bear does not get to come in because bear is a is a dog which those are predator animals and goats are prey animals and so even though bear is a good dog we don't want to bring him in maggie's space because he would make her feel not safe all right, so I'm watching Mags, and I don't really feel ligaments. I really like the way you're, you're staying low and you're being really quiet. That will make them feel really safe. You're doing a great job. So Maggie's a little weird when it comes to the ligaments thing because she's fooled me in the past. However, I feel pretty confident with the way her udder is swelling, and I'm just watching her, and this comes from knowing her really well, but like, the way she's walking around, she's kind of patting her feet. And I just watched her press her head up against the wall of the stall. And these things are happening, like she's briefly pausing and doing these things, which is typically a sign that she's having contractions. Another thing you'll watch goats do whenever they are in labor, especially like, like early into labor and then on into it, they do this thing where they take their jaw and kind of rotate their jaw. And um, that's just a way that they cope with pain. But do you see this curving in her, in her udder and the fullness that's kind of towards the top of her udder? No, it wasn't like that um, even this morning. Ben, do you see the way that her belly is kind of moving right there? Those are the babies moving around. Do you see that? Oh, yeah. That's cool, huh? Yeah. You can probably put your hand on her. She'll probably okay with that. Can you feel them? 
Kind of moving around a little bit. That's kind of cool, huh? She's pretty big. Yeah, she's really big. <laughs> but probably I'm like two babies or three. Good stuff. Sunlight. She likes laying in that sunlight. It's nice and warm. She's so little. Yeah. I think her little jumper is unraveling. So I got a little bit of a better feel here on her ligaments. And I feel like maybe I can still feel a little bit of a ligament. She's always been hard for me to tell. Oh. She always surprises me with her kids because she looks so close for so long. And then I'll finally like ease up on watching and then I'll come out and show off kids. And I'm like, ah. Missed it. Her udders definitely made a big change though, and I think she is acting a little different than usual. Got her. These babies are starting to get really spunky. <laughs> they run around and jump and play. They're so cute. Okay, let's get the onions out of the greenhouse. I really want a dog. You really want a dog? I know you've been talking to me about that. We're gonna wait a little while longer. All right, so we need to figure out where we're gonna put these onions. Put them right here. Wait, are we gonna scrape? Nope, we're not scraping a row. We're poking holes. You wanna find a stick or something? Ooh, I got a good idea. Got my onion sets. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? Guys, I just set you down in this patch of thyme and I wish you could smell it because it is heavenly. Oh, Benjamin, give that a whiff. Smell of it. Huh. Nice. All right, so if we're gonna put them here, hold on, it's warming up. Maybe I'm just moving a lot. Okay. Did you use the shovel to fill them? Come here, I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna talk to you about what we're doing. Okay, so I have three different types of sets here. I have some red Creole, some Texas early white, and some 1015 sweets. Okay. Which one should we plant first? I think this one. The sweets? Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Are you gonna be a student? Yeah. Okay, so just a little hole, not deep. We don't want them to go too deep. About an inch deep. And we're gonna space them out. Yeah, that's a little too close. Just a little hole? Yep, just a little hole. About Ooh. five inches oh. apart each way. And then we'll come this way, about five inches. So do you wanna poke the holes or do you wanna put the sets in? Poke the holes. Okay. Actually, I think this sounds, I think this sounds corner, but it's easier for me. You wanna, you wanna put the sets in? Yeah, because the it's slips. That's easier for you? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. they don't know how deep it should go? Yeah. Okay, I'll put one right so you, here. Yeah, and you might have to wiggle them down in there with these bigger ones, but just like that. That one Yeah. There you go. Now I'm going to bury them up. Now I'm going to bury them up like Perfect. that. Perfect. That's great. So, so we're just going to do this whole block of this bed all the way up to this trellis with these onions. Onions? Onginiensto. Onginiensto. <laughs> Was down there, got about 200 onions planted, and Jeremiah came home and went to check on Maggie, and now Benjamin is screaming my name, which leads me to believe that my hunch that she was about to start labor was correct. So let's go see. You think she's close? Uh, she's definitely in labor. I don't know how fast it'll go. And here's Margo standing guard over her mama. That is very sweet. Very sweet, Margo. Well, the way they were screaming for me, I thought she might like have something hanging out. And that's not the case. Though she does seem to be pretty intense. Babies are snuggled up to her. Um, I may sit back here for just a minute and observe her. And then I'm probably gonna go back to planting onions just because she's gonna want her space and that's something I need to get done. So it's close. And if I come up and check on her like every 10 to 15 minutes, I should at least catch if there's any issues. I should see the babies come out. Because usually there's this point, just leave it right there, you don't have to bring it in here. Usually there's a point in labor 
Like, you take him? Um, yeah, I'm about to go back down and plant onions. I'm not going to sit here with her this early. Usually there's a point in labor where, like, they start to have an ext like extreme amount of discharge. Like, once they have, like, this discharge that really hangs down and doesn't break, that's when you know, obviously, you're about to have babies. Goats are prey animals, as I said earlier. And prey animals don't have the luxury in nature of long labors. Their births can't take a long time because obviously it puts them in a very compromised position. It's why goats and sheep and horses and these other prey animals, specifically prey herd animals, it's why their babies hit the ground and they're like walking around really quick. They're not completely helpless because they need to be able to be born and then be moving pretty quickly. With the fact that she doesn't have any really active discharge, and she's not like actively pushing, this could take this could take hours. This could even take until tomorrow in some cases, but once that discharge starts, you're gonna have a baby really quickly or you have a problem. Maggie, that's my scarf, leave it alone. Maggie, oh. You'll see that stomping. She's gonna try to chew my scarf. I'm gonna have to stop her. Hey, Max, quit, quit. Ah, there goes that jaw movement I was telling y'all about, did you see it? Yeah, the way she's stomping, she keeps arching her back out and straightening it. And that's the first time I saw her do her jaw like that. That is a pretty telltale sign for me when a goat is acting this way and they start working their jaw. Here it goes again. I've actually never seen Maggie have babies before. She is my oldest goat. I've had her for almost six years. Margo here is Maggie's baby, but she always waits until I go away. Like I walk in and she drops them. I usually come back out right afterwards and so I'm kind of like, ugh. Oh my gosh, y'all look at this. <laughs> That's an interesting snu snuggle, Lady Mary. Hey guys, so it's about nine o'clock at night. I'm actually filming this on my cell phone because uh, it's really dark out here and we're about to go catch Anna next door. Um, not really sure with Maggie. Sometimes when it gets to be nighttime, if a goat is in early labor, that will slow it down and they'll wait until early morning. She doesn't have any discharge yet. Her, her udder has definitely filled out more even since we first started making this video. And Maya was just going around with the kids uh, before bedtime, checking on everything. And he said he felt like Anna had significantly bagged up as well next door. So we're gonna go ahead and bring her over here too, uh, just to make sure that the babies don't end up being born over in the mud. And then I'm gonna come back in and get my hands on Maggie a little bit more. Come inside for me. Okay. Flashlights. Gotta have are the lights. We, are we help? Hey, feel yeah, you are help. Yeah, I like Feel your heartbeat? Yeah. Yes. Wait, no. Right oh, here. Good. Guess what it's from? What? The babies. He's so excited. About the babies. <laughs> He's like his legs are shaking. <laughs> see, feel my legs. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can feel. You're super excited. <laughs> also, it's hard for me to walk. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, she's like isolating herself? No, she was laying in the herd until I came in and I looked at her. Oh, golly. See how much bigger that is? Yeah, let's get her next door. Because that's that's definitely larger than it was this morning. Hold on. All right. Let's catch up on the goat shenanigans as they just went down. I thought I was going to go to bed early. It's still early. That only took about 45 minutes. But um, it's actually almost 9 now. I had the time wrong. And we went out to check on Maggie one time before bed and uh got out there she's obviously still dealing with some pain i mean discomfort i would say she's not like being vocal she's not in pain but she is having discomfort she's moving around a lot her udder has gotten fuller but she has no discharge yet which means she could still go wait until morning but she'll definitely be having the babies in the next 24 hours her ligaments are really soft like i can't really feel anything and her bag is getting bigger and bigger so that's good. That's what we were expecting. She's still in the stall with Margot, 
But then Maya and the boys had gone next door and noticed that Anna's udder was really starting to fill out. Now her ligaments are not entirely soft, but just to be safe, we wanted to bring her over here in the yard with the barn right next to our bedroom window so we could hear her. And for a minute, we thought maybe we could put her in with Clover. We tried that, no go. Clover is a total butthead, and she just got really aggressive. Obviously, that's not something that a goat needs to deal with when she's in labor. So we decided to take Clover and her babies, since they're nice and sturdy and almost a week old now, out of the stall, and move the goats that were in that yard, the Grand Ole Opry that we got two months ago, in the yard next door. So we just did a lot of goat shuffling. Anna's in a stall now. Maggie is still in the stall with Margot. Clover is out in the yard by herself with her babies. And we went back and I got a better look at Winona and was able to feel her ligaments. She's definitely getting closer, but I would be extremely surprised if she had her babies tonight. Her ligaments are still pretty hard. So that, and, and her bag is not massive and she's a very heavy milker. I've never had her in milk, but I've seen photos of her udder when it's full and it's nowhere near there. So we decided to leave her tonight instead of chasing her around that big yard in the dark because we had already been chasing goats for 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go to bed uh, now, <laughs> early, and try to get some sleep, because it's gonna be a pretty long night. I'll be checking on the goats uh, periodically throughout the night to make sure nobody's giving birth. The main thing that I would be concerned about with that is if something comes out and goes wrong. Now, Anna and Maggie have both raised babies, but if something went wrong, or if for some reason the babies were born and it's below freezing, which it will be tonight, and the, if those moms were not attentive and did not get them dried off quickly, obviously that could be a life or death situation. So I wanna be as attentive as possible, so I'm gonna get some sleep. What'd you say, Ben? Today is a big day, isn't it? Yeah, it is a big day. So frosty out. All right, so you guys just came out here a minute ago. To check to check and were there babies no not yet let's go take a look hey look at the baby so these little ones are out bear back up she's gonna head back you because we needed the stall so they have graduated however we did put the other goats out of this yard because we did not want anybody trying to establish dominance with little babies this is a plot twist this is a plot twist yeah <laughs> It's okay. She'll be okay. She's gonna have babies here today. <laughs> it's morning. It's about 6:45, and uh, the we came out here. We've been checking in the night, and we knew Maggie hadn't had her babies yet. But then I came out here this morning and realized that Margot's babies were trying to nurse on Maggie and she was letting them. Now she hasn't been letting them the last couple days that they've been sharing a stall. And when Margot would try to come to her babies, Maggie would head better. So. And Maggie's intense. Intense, that's right. So we had to uh, let Margot and the babies out in the yard as well. Not ideal, I don't really like that, but her and Clover used to be in around each other. Clover's leaving her alone. Uh, because obviously Maggie needs to focus on having her own babies and Clover needs to be feeding her babies and taking care of them, so we had to separate them. Honestly, I think they're okay. Yeah, they're fine. Maggie's a little stressed out about it. She doesn't understand what's going on. She'll, she'll have her babies here in just a little bit, and she'll be okay. Yeah. Oh, Bruce, is in the, Bruce is in the bedroom window, huh? Yeah. These babies are so cute. Oh, good. Margo's getting to feed her little ones without interruption. So I'm glad we saw that and were able to intervene. All right, it's about 10.30 a.m. and we're starting to shift a little bit here with Maggie. She's kind of mildly pushing, nothing super active yet, a lot of up and down, and I don't see any strong discharge yet, but we've definitely got some progress. So I'm posting some Instagram stories of Maggie's labor. A lot of times you'll see things on Instagram before you see them on YouTube just because I'm posting them as they happen live and a lot of times videos don't come up until later. I 
I just texted Maya and told him to send the kids out. They were really excited to watch the birth. I definitely saw hooves on that last push. Okay, sit down and stay silent, please. Be respectful. Ezra, if you feel like you're going to throw up, you need to go back inside, okay? Is that a hoof? Yeah, that's a hoof. That's a hoof as well. She's going to give me a front row seat here. Okay, girl. Okay, I see the little nose next to the hoof. That's what I want to see. She seems to have been struggling with positioning a little bit. She's been doing a lot of back arching. And looking at that hoof, I just think it's a big kid. It's okay, girly. It's okay. It's okay. If she has this baby in my lap, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, girl. <laughs> Alrighty. It's okay. Oh. That's a big baby. This has got to be a big kid. <laughs> what are you doing? Animals do that sometimes. It's kind of like when kids eat jello. <laughs> <laughs> but it moves the, but it's not more She's cleaning up after herself. She's cleaning up you know after herself. Not because in the wild you clean up after yourself so other predators can't find you after you're done giving birth. She, I feel like she's stretching. Yeah, she's just. It's just freaking hard to walk. See if she'd stop walking around and lay down. It's okay. You got it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You got it. You got it. It's okay. It's okay. You're okay. You're okay. Look at it now. Here she goes. goes. This will do it. You got it, girl. Oh, this makes me feel so bad, bro. There we go. <laughs> She's, she's gonna have another contraction. Just give her a minute. She, here we go. There we go. Oh, God, that's a big kid. Okay. Oh. There you go. Get your camera. Got him, baby. You did it. Oh, my goodness. That was. <laughs> you know what you say now? Birthday. <laughs> no, she probably has one more. She Maybe probably two. has another one in there. They'll come faster after that one. That was a big one. His shoulder was caught. I don't know that she would have been able to push it out by herself. Did you see if it was a I haven't seen. I'm assuming it's a boy. I've never had a girl be born that big. That's that big. Can we keep him if he's a boy? Can we work? You waited so long. It is a girl. Really? Yes! Wow. Yes! Put some fresh straw down. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this will be enough. Mm. There it is. She may have only had... No, is that an amniotic sac? I can't tell. 
Oh, here's there's number two. That's not a small kid either. She might have a third. Let's see. How much weight's in the bottom of her stomach right now? She still has the placenta. Come on. Nose clear. You can leave the ass up as long as she can do. Yeah, nose is clear. Girl. Yeah. It's a girl. Yo, it's more than a woman. We're getting all the girls this year, fellas. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. They look like little cows. I can't believe she had two doughlings. I'm in shock. Never has this happened. We've never had this many doughs in a kidding season already, and we're not even done. I know. I mean, like one time we had 14 kids born and like 10. I know. And one boy. I know. Wow. Dr. Ennis is a keeper. Oh, he's, we have to build him a golden palace at this point. Like, with like a big bed that he, he can like breath. lay out and look majestic. I put him in. I didn't actually want babies at the beginning of February, but I put him in because he was so young and his leg was hurt. And I wanted to give him time to, that the girls would warm up to him and let him try. And he literally bred them within the first three days of being in. He he's must have. He's got the honey badger DNA. Oh my goodness. He just takes what he wants. <laughs> These are definitely the strongest kids we've had. They're they're big. Uh, they're significantly larger than Margot's babies right now, newborn, while Margot's babies are three days old. And they're super strong. I don't think there's going to be a third one. Uh, we'll wait a little bit longer and see, but it doesn't look like it. I can't believe they're both girls. I'm just shocked. What did y'all think about watching Bert? Uh, disgusting. It's disgusting, but it's beautiful. <laughs> it's disgusting, disgusting, but I'm glad that yeah. I'm glad that we're babies. Did you take babies. a video of the birth? Yes. Yeah, I'm glad that they were babies. Well, guys, successful birth. Uh, she's moved on to pushing out after birth, so we do not have a third kid. Totally fine with that. A lot of times, if a mom does have triplets, you'll end up with one that's weak or gets rejected. Um, so. So far this year, we've had three does. All three had twins. Five out of six were, f were female, which is wild. And I'm so thankful this all went smoothly. It was a little bit hard to watch there for a minute, but these are big, healthy kids and she seems to be doing just fine. I know this video is pretty long, so we're gonna part ways for now, but I bless you until next time.